seemed just far too athletic for White No to stay on the floor with him. And uh, we're back. Start of the second half. Hillcrest has possession here all out of the gates. Starting lineups back out there. And Tyler Hooker uh, misses a three early in that possession. The Montez zone was Brown. really good for Hillcrest in the first half. Uh, let's see whether they decide to stay in that zone because it was really, really good. Really good cut. Uh, and they were in the zone. A uh, really good cut uh, by... But, oh, the cut was by... Uh, Quantez Brown, the, the dish came from Kayvon Dover, Captain. And uh, that's, how, that's how you beat a team on offense, right? Quick passes. McDaniels from the free throw line, no good corral by Hooker. Ball batted around for a little while, but uh, Trey Smith picks up the loose ball. Let's uh, call that a fortunate bounce, a lucky <laughs> bounce. It bounced right into Trey Smith's hand. and uh, They didn't call it? No, they didn't call it. They didn't call it. Got lucky, and uh, uh, thankfully he finished. Hillcrest is back in their zone, Rock, as I talked about before in the previous possession. Uh -huh. Their zone was really, really good uh, for them in the first half. Uh, let's see how Dorman now attacks that zone because it did give them some problems in the first half. Let's see what happens. Daniel. Uh, with with the turnover there. I'm sorry, that was Brandon Pinkney with the turnover. Trey Smith comes the other way, kicks it back out. Hooker's in, he's starting to fall in love with that three captain. Might want to make one before he uh, before the night is over. Quick outlet pass on another missed three. Quantez Brown with the bucket. This 30-23. It's slowly starting to uh, get out of hand here, Captain. And that's the flip side of a scoring guard because especially that scoring point guard, uh, when you take quick shots. Uh, you totally compromise your defensive balance, especially in transition. So uh, they have to find a way to uh, get him involved a lot sooner so they can uh, protect their defensive balance in transition. Well, Thad Perry knocks down the three there, pulls this to within four. Yeah, when you got that guy at the top, Captain, shooting, and he's not in a position to get back if there's no rotation. Compromises everything. It, it compromises everything, and uh, let's pay attention to that. And uh, he's done a lot of shooting. Uh, hadn't done a lot of making. Uh, <laughs> it's a difference between you when you're taking and not doing a whole lot of making. So uh, let's keep an eye on that, E-Rock, and does, uh, just pay attention to uh, how many easy opportunities they give up because of uh, his ability to uh, try to score. Absolutely. Quantez Brown with the pump fake, Captain, gets fouled uh, going up. There's another left-hander on the floor uh, playing smartly, and uh, he, has, uh, he has quietly had a really nice game here. Uh, for Dorman. You know, there's some uh, people walking in front of your shot. We apologize. People got to move around here. Quantes, a little long on his first free throw attempt there. Man, it seems that lefties are becoming the Norman basketball captain. I told you about the myth uh, that's associated with lefties. Yeah. Um, that they're very smart, I think it's a myth very cerebral it's a fact. That's a fact. basketball players. And I don't know where that myth comes, or where it comes from, uh, and, and I haven't been able to tell whether it's uh, actually true or not. A, lef um, a left-hander uh, started it Yeah, because we're smarter. Just curious, are you a lefty? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Yes, but I'm not cerebral and I'm not a basketball player, <laughs> although I did sleep at a Holiday Inn last So, night. indeed, it is a myth. Absolutely. <laughs> I would imagine so. Uh, let's look at the Hall of Fame and see how many lefties are in it. Hillcrest into the front court. Almost another giveaway there. A little sloppy with the basketball. Good defense from Ar Arcega White Sox. He just stayed in front of him. Stayed in front of him, kept his feet, forced the air ball. Dorman comes the other way. Daniels into the lane, kicks it to Arcega White side. He shoots, no good. Rebound. Put back, no good. Played back in. Hillcrest comes up with the ball. And Tyler Hooker turns it over, Captain, in his own backcourt on a five-on-two break. At least he got back and played defense. He tips it out of bounds. This ball will stay in Dorman's side of the court. Tyler Hooker's playing like a sophomore, very <laughs> careless with the basketball, uh, turning it over, taking some ill-advised uh, bad shots. I like to see this basketball team uh, play with a lot. Uh, more disciplined offensively. But, again, uh, what do you expect when you're playing without a really, really good point guard in D.J. Brooks and also playing without your third best offensive player in Randall Shaw? Trey Smith brings it up over to 
Walker ends up back at Hooker. Trey Smith now with the ball. He's looking to get it to the block to Walker, Captain. See what they do. Back to Hooker. He's going to uh, I thought he was going to shoot again. <laughs> Trey Smith keeps his feet, backs it back out. The Charleston Southern signee comes off the pick, double teamed, and he gets it out to Hooker, across the Walker. Back to Hooker. If there was any myth that you could play uh, this game as a team sport captain without a point guard, we've seen in the last couple of games that that be dispelled. So, so important to have a guy that calms the waters for your team. So, so important to have somebody who understands how to take care of the basketball. Playing without a point guard, playing without a guy who understands flow and tempo, time and possession, uh, who understands uh, strengths and weaknesses of his teammates, uh, it makes it very difficult. It's almost like going into a boxing match uh, minus arms because there's absolutely no way you could get anything done uh, minus a point guard who really understands time and flow, time and possession. And uh, right now, that's the biggest issue when you look at this Hillcrest basketball team. Certainly, again, uh, don't want to minimize or, or discount the fact that uh, DJ Brooks is not on the court, but right. we are seeing a big, big drop-off in point guard play, which is to be expected because we are Absolutely. talking about a kid that's going to play Division One basketball next year in DJ Brooks. Backups are backups for a reason. Yes. Pinckney with the layup. No good. Smith comes the other way. Two-on-two two break here. Captain, he uh, is going to get the call for the charge there. Bad decision. That's going to be his third foul, Captain. Uh, Black just stood there and let yeah. him run into him. Let's see if we can look at that again. Yeah, he seemed to have a predetermined move uh, already made up in his mind. If we could take a look at that again. And uh, that's the one thing that plagues uh, young players. Uh, just It's not even a question. Yeah, it's not even a question. Just pull up and shoot the 15 foot jump Ooh. shot. He was already there. And that is the one thing that plagues a lot of these young kids. Mm -hmm. A predetermined move in your head is sometimes come back to haunt you, and that's what we just saw a few moments ago. That ended up being very, very big foul call against Trey Smith. Several shot opportunities here for Dorman. They stay at after it, Captain, and eventually they get it off the foot of a Dorman player. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, a Hillcrest player. They'll, they'll hold on to the ball here. You know, that, uh, that, that jump stop uh, doesn't seem to be a part of the game anymore. When I was a, a youngin', we were taught to uh, do a jump stop just inside the free throw line. The floater has taken the place of their 15 foot pull up jump shot. Well, That's you, exactly what has happened. It doesn't look as cool. It's not as pretty to pull up and shoot that 15 foot jump shot in transition. They rather get really deep into the lane and throw up a floater, uh, toss that runner, uh, that running shot. And I think that's what the younger guys prefer, uh, which uh, to become a better player, you got to find a way to knock down that 15 foot jump shot. You got to be smarter, especially Trey Smith, a guy that's going to play Division I basketball next year because that lane closes, that lane collapses really, really quickly at the next level. Get used to doing it right now. Well, you can look at me and tell that I've never floated. I've gloated. I've been bloated. <laughs> but I've never floated. Uh, there's a foul on the post there uh, committed on Walker for Hillcrest. Um, Hillcrest inbounds it from under their, uh, their own basket. Just throw it to the top. There's Trey Smith at midcourt. Crosses over Whiteside. Goes, and he is blocked. Nice defense. This kid's, uh, this kid's putting together a resume in one game, and then he gets the block shot, puts it back in. How did he get down there so quickly? I like him. However he got down there, I like him, and this is a guy that we are going to be talking about here in the state of South Carolina. Again, uh, we talked about him at the top of the hour. We talked about him um, at the top with head coach Tom Ryan, mm -hmm. and he talked about how this kid has generated a lot of interest from several Division I schools. He had a big, big summer, and uh, um, I can understand the excitement that's being uh, shared with this kid, and I can understand why so many schools yes. are now uh, paying attention to uh, what he's doing over the next few years. Yeah, let's take a look at that again, Captain. Here's a guy who plays defense and then gets down the floor. You got a motor, you play smart, you play defense. That Never stop playing, and that coaches love that. That doesn't even need commentary. Yeah, and, and, and 
a player like that will be tagged when it comes to recruiting. A player like that will be tagged as a two-way player because he plays on both ends of the floor. 32-28, Dorman. Both, uh, both of those free throws were made on the Hillcrest end here. It's still a four-point game. We've got about 10 minutes left in game two. Just over two minutes left here uh, in the third period. Dorman in white, Hillcrest in the black. These are the number two and three teams in the state, respectively. We brought you the number one team on Friday, and we'll be bringing you games every week here on ABR Live. The South Carolina High School Game of the Week, Dorman and Hillcrest. Now they're letting them play, Captain. I guess they uh, used up all their uh, their whistles and <laughs> fouls in the first half. That's uh, Amavi Draper uh, with the bucket for, for Dorman. Walker kicks it to Smith. There's the floater you spoke of, and it's good. But he also did a terrific job of avoiding contact. Um, he floated towards the baseline to avoid contact. That seems to be the scouting report on Trey Smith. Dorman is doing a terrific job of getting up under him and forcing him into charges. Uh, he did a much better job of recognizing that uh, the last possession and avoided contact. There's Daniels with the 432nd charge of this game. <laughs> <laughs> I <laughs> guess that's a good thing because that tells me that you have some high school coaches <laughs> in Coach Choplin and Coach Ryan that are spending a lot of time on teaching their players how to take charges. So I like it. Uh, that tells me they're spending a lot of time when it comes to fundamentals, something that uh, uh, depending on who you're talking to and depending on who you're watching, uh, something that could be um, – very conspicuous by their absence, it, fundamentals. It also means they're playing a great, oh my goodness, he goes baseline, misses the jam, that was Trey Smith. It also means these guys are playing aggressive and attacking the bucket back, Captain, but as you've said, and you, you like the woodenisms, play fast but not in a hurry. Be quick but not in a hurry. There. And they certainly have been quick tonight and they've also been in a hurry. Walker, you gotta capitalize three on one. He's gotta you gotta get, gotta that get that a up. foul layup, you gotta get a foul yeah. layup, I remember. Uh, plan for Coach Fogler, who's a product of Dean Smith and the North Carolina system. Uh, when you talk about the game of basketball, and certainly you can draw up plays and you want to execute those plays, but this is how the game is won. The game is won on your three-on-twos and your two-on-ones, and anytime you have a three-on-one, two-on-one, yeah. uh, there's a golden rule. You have to get fouled or get a layup. If you don't get fouled or get a layup, uh, what a blown opportunity. Let's, Fortunately let's... for Hillcrest, they did get fouled. They got saved by the bell, and now they're at the free throw line trying to salvage this possession. I'm, I'm going to say that Trey Smith was a little selfish on that. Three on one, if he makes the extra pass, easy, easy bucket there, and they've already given away a point on this. Let's take a look at that again, if we can pull, roll that back here in a second. But if he makes one extra pass, Captain, uh, they've got two. Instead, Walker goes to the line and misses both. When we get a chance, I want to look back at that again and see if you agree with me. But I think that in that case, uh, if, if Trey Smith makes one more pass, uh, they get an easy bucket. In, in any, uh, yeah, especially when you, because uh, they didn't convert on that free throw. Iraq missed two free throws. It's almost like a turnover because they didn't get anything out of, it, out of that possession. And so now you have a turnover. And Pinckney finds uh, Quantez Brown on the back cut, Captain, for an easy bucket. You like to see that. Team play and uh, an easy looks. That's a... Basketball 101, six-point game here, and that was a four-point turnaround uh, for Hillcrest. We got under 10 seconds to go. Trey Smith with the top ball, top he'll go on his own. Uh, no, he gives it up. Uh, our, mm, our Siegel Whiteside with the pick and almost hits the midcourt. What, a, what shot. a terrible possession uh, by Hillcrest. Uh, 10 seconds to go. 10 seconds to go. You have the chance to finish. Uh, the quarter with a really good quality shot. Uh, you turn it over and give them an opportunity to score on the other end. Terrible possession. And again, with no point guard uh, that's good enough to recognize what's going on, this is why you uh, see a team crumble at the end of the quarter like we just saw a few moments ago. We're going to toss it over to Chad, who's going to help us out with some highlights. Look like we're going down to Augusta. Yeah, yeah, we're going to update you on the Columbia stuff in a second, but Right now, we're going to go with uh, Aquinas and Augusta against Athens Academy. Uh, looks like uh, we're going to get it up here in one moment. But uh, Aquinas is uh, playing Athens Academy, and they're up big 
in the first half. And so you'll see here, you'll see Michael Scott, the point guard, uh, plays AAU basketball with Marcus Stroman and Ahmed Hill and some of these guys. He's going to make a couple good moves to the basket here. Big score and a small body out of Augusta. You'll see Ahmed Hill here in a moment. Um, this is actually a young uh, sophomore, or that's Ahmed with the, the follow there. But um, guys in the back, we'll go ahead and cut back to live action here. Dorman versus Hillcrest. We'll bring the highlights in a little while. Dorman misses a, uh, a, a field goal to tip there early in uh, the fourth quarter. And there's Whiteside with yet another steal and the flush. And he brings the crowd to their feet, 38 to 30, with seven and a half to remaining in this game. We talked about Trey Smith a lot at the top, but it uh, looks like Whiteside may be still in the show. Uh, he may be still in the show, and again, uh, his coach spoke very, very highly of him. Uh, his coach talked about the interest that he's generated, and um, I can see why. Let's, I can see why. I love let's see effort. it again. Yeah. Let's look at it again, Captain. He's really active on both ends of the floor, and uh, when it comes to uh, this kid being recruited, he will be tagged as a two-way player, meaning not only is he good enough offensively, but he's also good enough defensively because he's tremendously active. And I want to I, I want to thank uh, AugustaBasketball.com and ABR Live and, uh, and all of this for allowing us to bring you this because it's an opportunity to see a name you might not have heard of, and it's an opportunity, C Captain, for some coaches to look at this and uh, and give this guy an extra look. There's probably some coaches that already know about him, like the guys you were talking about at Clemson are saying, hey, 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 let's keep this on the down low. We don't want everybody knowing about how this kid. There's supposed to be someone else there they're looking at, not my guy. Well, I can tell you one thing because of – of the experience I've had uh, playing because of the experience I've had in terms of knowing and meeting a lot of coaches. Uh, his name will go down on my list <laughs> for me to reach out to several coaches and let them know that there's a kid up at Dorman that you guys need to get on, get in on right now because he certainly will be one of the highest recruited mm. players in the state of South Carolina in two years. Yeah, uh, the conversation will go something like this. Yo, man, get yourself up to uh, Spartanburg. I don't, got somebody for you. Don't ask any questions. You <laughs> trust me, right? We have a friendship. So believe in what I'm telling you and get your hiney up to Spartanburg so you can take a look at Whiteside. I'm really glad uh, that we got a chance to see this. We know some of the other names uh, out here, but the kid is having him a heck of a game. Trey Smith falls down, keeps his dribble alive, does his best uh, curly from the Globetrotters. Back to the top of the key for Hooker. He'll try to go one-on-one. -on -one. A lot of one-on-one -on -one basketball on the Hillcrest side. But you understand why. And, and, and certainly Trey Smith hasn't been splendid tonight. Uh, but when you're playing without your running partner, uh, whenever you're playing without your third lead scorer, um, a lot of pressure falls on your shoulder. And right now he's playing like a guy uh, that has a lot of pressure on him to make up for what they're missing. But as you can see, he's still doing – all of the little things. He's still continuing to fight. He's still playing hard. What a great putback just now. Uh, but it's going to be tremendously difficult, minus those two guys, especially down the stretch on the road. 38-34 uh, Hillcrest uh, trailing by four. Dorman back into the offensive set. Arcega Whiteside over to Quantez Brown, another kid I've been impressed with tonight, Captain. Uh, Brandon Pinckney over to Kayvon Dover, back to Josh Black. He'll put it on the floor, it's kind of direct in traffic, it, and he gets it picked, Captain, from Hooker. Nice defensive play from the young man. Two-point game. There it is. Nice, nice play, uh, Captain. Just put some pressure on the ball and see what happens, right? Especially the way Hillcrest wants to play, and I think for them uh, to have a chance to finish up, for, for them to have a chance to uh, finish this game in a strong fashion and obviously give them a, give themselves a chance to win. Uh, they got to play like this. They got to speed the game up. They have to disrupt what uh, Dorman is doing because offensively, uh, especially in the half court, uh, they're somewhat inept minus D.J. Brooks, uh, minus Shaw, too much pressure on Trey Smith. Junkie the water up a little bit, make the game ugly, get out and create tempo, get some steals, get some easy opportunities. Now you're not forced to be as deliberate in the half court. Let's take a look at that again, uh, Captain. It, it was a 
Dorman was in a possession there. They were uh, playing nice and slowly, patient, and uh, good hands here from Hooker. One dribble from midcourt. They've been active all night long with their hands, and that's what I've been really impressed with. Now they're extending it full court. Uh, let's see how Dorman responds. Uh, they don't. Got a turnover. Trey Smith ties it up. Ties it up. Captain, uh, tie game here. You know, you, we've talked about the players that, are, that aren't able to play today, but you have to be reminded these teams are number two and number three in the state, not because of one guy on any particular team. There are, there are uh, teams with a lot of talent. Absolutely, but when you talk about uh, losing the player of D.J. Brooks' caliber, when you talk about the position that he plays, uh, you're going to be a lot more glaring, and that's why we've seen a Hillcrest team that has not been uh, very cohesive. Uh, we've seen a Hillcrest team that hasn't had any rhythm offensively, and that's what you lose when you lose a guy like D.J. Brooks, a Division I uh, signee, uh, Mercer uh, College. So, uh, But I still like the competitive nature. I like the fire, and um, I think we're going to go and, and have a very interesting and competitive five minutes down the stretch. Right now it's a two-point game, and Hillcrest has decided to uh, muddy up the waters and try to disrupt flow and create tempo with their defense. Junior Quantes Brown, who got the start today uh, because Trey Robinson is at the North-South All-Star game in Myrtle Beach playing football, has had himself one heck of a game. One heck of a game. He's, uh, he's been very active in, uh, around the bucket. Knocks down the free throw to complete the three-point play and uh, puts Dorman back up by three. Trey Smith takes on three guys, and he puts it in the bucket. Nice move by the young man. 41-40, and that might be a turnover. Got to be a foul or layup. Great decision and by one. Trey Smith just now. Three on one, two on one. It has to be a foul or it has to be a layup. We just got, got both. both. Got <laughs> both just now. Uh, let's, let's look at this replay. And it's something we talked about earlier, E-Rock, and Trey Smith did make a good sound decision right. in about uh, four or five possessions before this. But I think he heard us. I think he heard us, and he made the right play and got the foul and layup. What a great momentum changer. Set up the defense there, didn't he? It looked like he was going to pull up and shoot. Uh, and with the quick dish, but... Tyler Hooker unable to uh, complete the three-point play, play captain. But no matter, Hillcrest has a one-point lead here on the road with 437 remaining from Dorman. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, again, we are going to go down uh, go down home stretch, and it's going to be very, very competitive. And um, as we're uh, waiting for these guys to take the floor coming out of their timeout, we're going to toss it back over to Chad as he updates us on Spring Valley and Westwood. Okay, what a great game here. And it's a good one over at Spring Valley and Westwood. Not nearly as close, though, Kerry. The Spring, uh, the Spring Valley guys are up big at Westwood. We'll see a, a little bit of the action here. Spring Valley in the green. Yes, I'm, I'm here. P.J. Dozier has had several uh, monster dunks. And um, um, I heard it's a blowout. It looks like it's a blowout. There was a lot of excitement at the beginning because of the two brothers P uh, Perry Doge and Terry Doge two former Gamecocks uh, but remember uh, that was going to create some uh, create a few headlines but uh, PJ Doge was probably going to be the show and from everything that we're seeing from everything that we've been told it's not a game over there as Spring Valley has really opened up the lead and right you see Doge here getting loose on the break slamming it home and um, you know it's a 20 point 20 plus point lead uh, Spring Valley over Westwood. See him giving Westwood all kinds of problems defensively, but let's get back to the action here. We appreciate that, Chad. Back into action. I, I just want to know one thing, Captain. Who, who's the better dressed coach there, Perry or Terry? That's probably going to be Perry because he's, <laughs> uh, he'll probably win that category as the best dressed coach in all of the state of South Carolina. He looks the part. <laughs> Hillcrest is back in the zone, Iraq. Yeah. Uh, back in the 1-2-2 uh, two, two zone that uh, was so good to them early on, and uh, uh, they've been active. Let's continue to see uh, not only how active they are out of that zone, but more importantly, Iraq, how well does this team rebound out of the zone? Oh, and Arcega Whiteside drains the three out of the out of the uh, inbound pass, Captain. Uh, it does seem that uh, 
Ooh, nice move from Trey Kelly with the layup. Trey We're Smith. all tied up. I'm sorry, Trey Smith. Trey <laughs> Kelly, where'd that come from? Trey South Carolina. He's I done, know. I'm he's sorry. done that so many times in Columbia. Um, it's <laughs> easy to get him mixed up. <laughs> uh, tie game here. Yeah, Hillcrest has played some uh, really uh, fantastic defense, Captain, causing all kinds of havoc and creating turnovers. That becomes infectious among the team, amongst the team, doesn't it? Ah. Uh. Not a good foul, not a smart play at all by Trey Smith. I understand uh, you're trying to be aggressive, but the zone has been good. If he's going to beat you with a three-pointer from five feet beyond the three, then you take your chances and you allow him to take that shot. Uh, don't bail the offense out by getting a cheap foul that far away from the basket. Got to be smarter than that. Trey Smith. Still not in the bonus yet, although Hillcrest is. That is going to go to Dorman. What a big moment here to tie the game up. Yes, turbo recognition by Hillcrest getting out. You got to recognize this kid has been good all night long, and you got to recognize that Trey Smith does a terrific job of attacking that gap, attacking. Uh, the teeth of the defense getting into the lane, creating an easy scoring opportunity. Daniels will set it up at midcourt here. To Pinckney, back to Daniels. The Pinckney will take the shot, and he drains it, Captain, just under three minutes, and Dorman takes a three-point lead on the Pinckney three. Neither uh, team has shot the ball particularly well from the three-point line tonight. Uh, but Whiteside and Pinkney have both come up big with three-pointers down the stretch. Dover almost gets the steal there, but it goes out of bounds. Hillcrest will maintain possession. Yeah, I guess it's, we'll go and take a look at this shot here from the corner, Captain. Daniels kicks it over to Pinkney here. He doesn't hesitate and drops it. Trey Kelly going well, to the hoops the once again. He is aggressive here, Captain, and uh, he's another player here in the fourth quarter. Well, I think um, uh, he's doing a better job of attacking the defense, and um, I've always been impressed with Trey, Ke uh, Trey Smith. Excuse me. There you go. Uh, yeah, I've um, always been really, really impressed with him, and he's doing a much better job of attacking uh, the defense. He's allowing the defense to shift, and he's kind of catching the defense, defense in disarray, and it's much easier to go against a defense that's shifting, a defense that's in disarray, as opposed to going against a set defense. Kerry, it's like deja vu here. A three from Dorman, and then Trey Smith answers quickly with the slashing drive to the hole. I think he likes to be ignited by the other team making the three before he attacks yeah. the basket. Because that's a heck of a way to play. That's two plays in succession that he's done the same exact thing. And uh, even I was telling E-Rock early on, uh, that neither team has really shot the ball particularly well from the three-point line all night. But Whiteside and Pinkney have both come up big, making three-pointers for Dorman the last few possessions. I agree. I agree. I like that Trey Smith is scoring around the bucket. With a game like a name like Trey, those guys like to shoot from outside, Trey for Trey. But Trey's got a lot of deuces tonight. And, and certainly because he's multidimensional, uh, he can pass it. Uh, he can shoot it. He can handle it. And, and we've, we've seen some plays that are certainly uncharacteristic of uh, Trey because there's such pressure on him to get it done minus those other t, uh, two key guys. But we've seen him settle down here late. Daniels attacks the bucket, misses it. The, the putback is no good, and it's stolen the other way with Hooker. He makes it, and they take a one-point lead. The roadside, Hillcrest up one with two minutes remaining here. And a nice look from Daniel to who's that fella? Quantez Brown on the on the uh, baseline for the layup. Let's take a look at those last two possessions, Captain. Uh, these teams are, uh, are, are making it happen on the defensive side of the floor. Yeah, and uh, here's the layup from Hooker, uh, but Dorman doesn't waste any time. They don't mope. They get back up the floor. Well, they they caught Hillcrest as they were trying to set up the press. And because they were on their heels, they didn't get a chance to get set in their press. 
Dorman did a terrific job of attacking, and not only attacking the press, but finishing the play, and that's what happens when you press. You give up something. If you're going to take away something at the point of that press, then unfortunately you're going to have to give up something on the back end. That's what happened with Hillcrest. Give Dorman credit for getting the ball out quickly and not allowing Hill, uh, excuse me, Dorman to set their press up. Excuse me, Hillcrest, Hillcrest set their press up. You had it right the first time. Okay. I think I'm excited, just like the other fans, um, yeah. with the way this game is going down the stretch. Second uh, South Carolina high school game of the week, and we've got another barn burner here. Don't step away, folks. We Let's see whether Trey Smith comes and get the basketball. I think he needs to have the basketball in his hand to try to give this team an opportunity to close out the game on the road. Trey Smith has to come get it, especially minus the other two key offensive guys. I think there was a foul on that play, and there's nothing called Hooker. If he wasn't fouled, then that was just a poor decision. It was a poor decision, and um, I don't think he should have gotten that foul called because you're taking away the advantage from the defense. Uh, he went into no man's land, had absolutely no place to go, and uh, thus getting a tunnel. Wow, look at this tournament. Next. My goodness. This is. Uh... Randall Walker got the turnover and had an easy, easy chip shot at the basket down one and could not convert it. Uh, they get lucky because they find a way to uh, get the turnover. But wow, you got to take advantage of that easy chip shot if with one minute and 33 seconds to go. I want to take a look at that again because I think that ball bounced out of bounds and it should have, it bounced off the face of uh, Daniels for Dorman, landed out of bounds and they didn't call it. Uh, it stayed. Uh, uh, sit, t let's take a look at this real quick. See, tell me this ball doesn't bounce out of bounds. Maybe I'm wrong here. Nope, it sure didn't. The refs, refs two, Eric, nothing. And Hooker, mm, I don't like that shot. Well, I don't there. get it because you got two straight possessions and Trey Smith does not touch the basketball. I don't get it. I don't understand it. Wow, there's a tip in, Captain. They kept it alive and kept fighting, and I think that was Tyler O'Shea. I think I'm, they're going to give that to number 20 on the tip in and now he gets a turnover he comes the other way three on one you got to give it up oh wow got to give it up wow. captain what a terrible decision and selfish play to shoot that basketball three on one something we've talked about all night these are the plays that determine the outcome of the game yes it looks good when you're in your half court set and you're executing uh -huh. you have one two three different options Yes, that looks really, really good. But these are the plays that normally determine the outcome of the game. Three on twos, two on ones, getting fouls, getting free throws, and convert easy scoring opportunities. Let's take a look at it again, Cap, because this, I think the Zebras may have bailed out O'Shea out. Here he comes the other way. He's got guys on either side of him, Captain. And it goes back to something we talked about before, a predetermined move, something that plagues these youngsters all of the time, not only at the high school level, but also at the college level. And I'm talking about the high, the highest level of college basketball. Guys get it made up in their minds what they're going to do, what plays they're going to try to make without reading and reacting, without surveying the scene to help make the determination on what type of play to make. If you're a point guard and your big man's willing to run the floor with you, you better award him. Yeah, but uh, we got Well, I out. played point, and I tell you, I had the fortune of playing with two all-SEC players in Jamin Watson and Emmett Hall. And as a point guard, um, I had to recognize uh, when each one of those guys needed the basketball. If I went uh, two, three possessions in a row and one of my guys didn't touch it, uh, regardless of what Coach Fogler called on the sideline, I knew that I had to keep that other guy satisfied because – if those guys weren't satisfied, they weren't going to rebound, they weren't going to run the lanes for me. And if those guys are not doing that, that's going to make my job far, far too hard. So uh, those are some of the things that can't be taught when it comes to playing a point guard position, which is why it is the one position on the floor that can never, ever be manufactured. Well, they got bailed out of all of that, Captain, and uh, Shields at the line right now. And he will, uh, he, he's got an opportunity to put his team up by three. 50 seconds to go, he run a big free throw, three, three point game, one possession game. Uh, let's see what happens, let's see what happens. Uh, Hillcrest is in a one, two, two zone. Uh, the zone has been really, really good to them. 
Daniels will take it himself. It's no good. He comes down the way. Captain, he should pull it out. 31.7 seconds remaining here, and they're in the bonus, so he'll go to the line. And I think he made the right play. He had a breakaway. He was out front. Um, got an opportunity to get a get an easy opportunity at the basket, and I think he made the right play. Uh, you don't want to risk, especially with how careless this team has been with the basketball Fair in enough. their half-court sets. Fair enough. Mine is a point guard. Mine is D.J. Brooks. Um, I think you have to go and try to get that bucket. If you have a D.J. Brooks, a guy who understands time of possession, a guy who understands value in possessions, yes, I think you do pull it out and you try to get a, you try to get something better. But minus that guy, I think he made the best decision by going and trying to get an easy opportunity at the basket. Well, fortunately for Hillcrest, they're in the double bonus, so he gets two opportunities to make one, and he only needs one to make this a two-possession game. Imperative that he makes this free throw because, yes, now it becomes a two-point game. But you still have to be careful if you're Hillcrest. You don't want to give up anything easy. You want to play good, sound defense, but also you want to conclude the defensive possession by rebounding. Let's see what Dorman does. Mm. He needed to kick that to our uh, to our Siegel White. I think he called a foul. He it is a foul? a foul. It is a foul. It's a foul on on Hillcrest. It looks like it'll be his fifth. Let's run, let's run that. Well, I tell you what, we'll keep it right here. 19.7 seconds remaining, folks. Four point game. You see their score there at the bottom of your screen. 53-49 Hillcrest. Number Lucky for Hillcrest, it's only their 15 foul, so they're not in a one and one. White side to the corner. There might be a foul there. What a gusty performance by Hillcrest. We, we talked about all of the guys that were missing at the top of the show. We talked about Hillcrest having to go minus DJ Brooks, a terrific point guard, a Division I uh, point guard signing on to play at Mercer next year. We talked about them also playing without their third leading scorer in Randall Shaw, who did not make the trip because of the flu. DJ Brooks has a torn ACL. He's out for the year. The only uh, really proven offensive commodity you had going for you tonight was Trey Smith, who got up to a, a very, very slow start, who had some uncharacteristic plays. But these guys found a way to get it done. They kept it close. They used their defense to get easy scoring opportunities. And what a great performance by these guys. Yes, it was ugly, but you know what? When you're on the road, you'll take it however it comes. Uh, now, 13 seconds to go. Got to find a way to finish this game off. I think they'll do that. They're playing with a lot of confidence. Again, uh, what a great and uh, uh, gust of performance by uh, Hillcrest tonight. And let's not discount how well Trey Smith played there in the fourth quarter. Uh, when the game was on the line, he got to the bucket. He made most of his opportunities, uh, and he led his team. Defense and uh, timely buckets is what Hillcrest used uh, to get a win here, it looks like. And they do get a steal. Was he fouled taking a three-pointer there? Uh, Looks like he stepped out of bounds. Unfortunate. 11.1 seconds now. Hillcrest will inbound it. That's uh, Kajana Madden down there. There'll, there'll be a timeout here on the floor with 11.1 seconds uh, remaining in this game. This is where you miss a DJ Brooks. 11 seconds to go. Uh, being pressed uh, because of how good and how talented this kid is. Uh, you find a way to get the ball to him in the backcourt, and you clear out, and you trust in D.J. Brooks to make a play, and not only make a play, but to make the right play. And um, uh, Hillcrest, obviously, uh, this is not the first game they've had to go without D.J. Brooks. From what I'm told, I think he tore his ACL five minutes into the last game against Dorman. So they played without him before, um, but certainly they haven't had this type of challenge on the road. So it was gut check time for them, and they uh, they passed the test, Captain. 11 seconds remaining. Kajana Madden to end down it from the Dorman side of the floor in the corner. He throws a, a bomb. Trey Smith with the catch. Lays it up and in, and that's going to do it, folks. Six seconds here. Uh, basketball, uh, baseball pass up to our single wide side. His three. Goes over the backboard. Five tenths of a second remaining. Six point game here in favor of Hillcrest. And wow, Captain, uh, a little surprise here with the, with the uh, result? I am surprised, especially considering the guys that Hillcrest was going without, especially uh, the magnitude of the kids 
uh, that were not available, namely uh, DJ Brooks. Uh, when you, you know, playing the point guard position is such a, a valuable commodity, especially at the high school level. And to lose a point guard at this level against a team like Dorman, the number two team in the state of South Carolina, and to come on the road in a hostile environment, minus your arguably best player, and to still find a way to get it done, wow, impressed, impressed. Second South Carolina high school game of the week uh, is in the books, Captain, and if this, these two are any indication of what we've got to go uh, bring to you this year, well, hold on to your hats, folks, because it's going to be a fun, exciting year of high school basketball. I'm so happy we got to be a part of that. And the, the uh, students now from Hillcrest, there was a, a nice contingent here on, on, on hand, uh, kind of stormed the floor to enjoy it with the, the students, and they've got to love that. The players have to love that. Let's just be happy that we do have police presence here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, that's one thing that home teams take personally. Uh, they don't like other teams rushing the floor and uh, kind of invading uh, their territory, being somewhat intrusive. Uh, so let's be happy. Let's be glad. And now you're seeing security move those guys off the floor. Uh, what a smart move. Uh, but you certainly uh, have to understand the excitement uh, that the Hillcrest student, uh, student section uh, certainly experiencing. Because uh, think about what they were up against. Again, they're playing without two of their top three best players. Uh, you don't know what the expectations were. Certainly, uh, you know they weren't the same as it would have been with those two guys. But uh, a gust of performance. Uh, they stayed behind them. Uh, they supported him, and uh, Coach Choplin, congratulations to him for getting his guys ready and not allowing his guys to feel sorry for themselves. Hey, we're playing without our two of our three best players, and he found a way to lock those guys in and connect those guys to what was going on, and they stayed focused on the game plan, and not only did they stay focused, but they did a terrific job of executing their game plan. Let's take a look at some of the highlights from this game, and then we'll go across the state uh, and get highlights from Augusta and from beyond uh, here in a moment. The guys uh, letting us know they've got some highlights here. Captain, we'll get your thoughts on some of these plays. Uh, great interior passing. Um, I thought Dorman did a good job of, uh, once they found angles, getting into the middle of the lane and creating opportunities. Hillcrest got a lot in transition early. Trey Smith was uh, the main culprit. He was the guy uh, that got a lot of opportunities uh, in transition. Here's our guy, Quantez Brown, Captain, with... Uh, one of his several points. I'd love to see the box score on this and see how, how many he had, but he seemed to be around a lot. Kick to the corner. One of the few threes that Hillcrest hit today. Yes, and also one of the uh, uh, few times that, uh, uh, that Hooker uh, made good decisions in the paint. I thought he uh, played uh, somewhat reckless early on. Uh, and and uh, you are uh, playing as a sophomore. You are playing behind D.J. Brooks, so you have to wonder... Uh, that playing time was going to be somewhat limited, but um, he found a way to uh, get out of here with a win tonight. And that was our Seagull White side with the block and then the lay, uh, the dunk on the other end. He's uh, he's an early candidate for the all-carry team, the all-captain team yes. for 2012-2013. For, for uh, here he goes the other way with a dunk. I think they've slowed that down a little. I don't think he 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 can he can uh, suspend himself that long. <laughs> That's called uh, being athletic. <laughs> what a great pass by Trey Smith! I told you at the top that he was a multi-dimensional guy. Uh, there you see him again, splitting uh, splitting the defense. Uh, missed the first uh, first chance at the basket, uh, but because he's really quick off the floor, he's really nimble uh, on his feet, and he found a way to get a a quick basket uh, via the offensive rebound. Stuck with it, stick to itiveness. Here he is with another nice He loves the paint. He loves getting a piece of the paint and uh, talking to the guys down at the College of Charleston, uh, excuse me, Charleston Southern. That's the one thing uh, they spoke uh, very highly about Trey Smith, his ability to get from point A to point B comfortably off the bounce and also continually uh, getting a piece of the paint, making plays for either himself or his teammates. Yeah, you know, I hate to interrupt, Kerry, but that's what I, I was impressed with. Uh, you know, you mentioned at the SCBCA banquet that you saw Trey Smith and you were impressed and you went and told people about him. And I see why tonight. He's, um, he's got that competitiveness. Um, not, not a blow-away athlete. Right. And I think um, e Eric uh, mentioned earlier, not like a, um, a, a deep shooter, but he gets it done. He and gets it done. And um, I was at, a, at an event. Uh, I think it was one of the showcases. And um, as I always do, I, I like to... 
uh, evaluate and just kind of uh, observe and, and see which players stick out. And um, we had other guys in, in attendance that day, like a Marcus Storm, who's a South Carolina commit, uh, Matt Howard, who who's committed to play at Penn. And uh, Trey Smith was better than both of those guys right. because of his effort, because of yeah. how he impacted the game in so many different uh, ways. And um, had a chance to speak to he and his mama after um, after uh, the the event, and I. I uh, wanted to find out who was involved, who who are some of the teams that are looking at you. And uh, I think at that time they had about two schools looking at him. And I said, well, just hold tight. I'm going to make a few phone calls because I like the way you play. And um, um, I think within the next uh, seven to ten days, he had about ten phone calls from several different Division One schools ultimately decided to play for B.J. Mackey, Barkley, Radabaugh down at Charleston Southern. I think the thing I like about him the most is the way he attacks the basket. You know, it's ball handling it. He, he's not the quickest guy in the world, but he gets there, and that means he's got to be a good ball handler. And he understands how to play. Yeah. He has great vision. He has a terrific feel for the game, and uh, that's why those coaches are very, very high on him uh, down at Charleston Southern, and you expect him to uh, impact Charleston Southern as a true freshman next year. Okay, well, Eric said it a second ago that we would have highlights, and we are um, going to go ahead and do that and bring you stuff from around the state. Um, we've already dropped in a little bit on Irmo and um, Irmo and, uh, White and Spring, White Spring Valley. Irmo against White Knoll and, and Spring Valley against Westwood. We'll revisit that for a moment. We got cut off a little bit on that, uh, on that uh, Spring Valley thing. So, so we'll come back to that. This was early, Westwood getting a basket. But after this, it was kind of all Spring Valley. You'll see here in a moment. Um, you know, Spring Valley force a turnover. Dozier here with the ball, pitches it ahead. Ball gets a little bit loose, but he comes back up with it, finishes. He's about to get one on the break in a moment here and uh, finish with authority. And it was all uh, Perry and PJ Dozier over uncle and brother Terry Dozier. Looks tonight. like it's a final down there, 6 to 138. That's Spring right. Valley. That's right. That's right. I like those Spring Valley uniforms. Yeah. They look good. Well, they're taking after their head coach. They want to be the best-dressed <laughs> team like their head coach is certainly the best-dressed coach. <laughs> okay. Okay. Good. Good. And then, um, and then we'll jump over. We'll, we'll revisit uh, the Irmo game very quickly here. Um, you know, another, another uh, victory for Irmo. So they, they remain undefeated here early in the season. Sorry, I had it. That's all right. Not quite right. There it is. Now, while we're watching some of this, guys, do you want to do you want to preview some of the things that's co that are coming up this weekend? We'll be at Ridgeview High School. Um, we're we're gonna we're gonna see Ridgeview in action. Ridgeview start starting off strong, coach. They are starting er, off strong. Coach. Um, well, they actually he's um, coached. <laughs> yeah. he, he coaches some uh, some mighty fine athletes right now. Yeah, yeah. eight and none, as a matter of fact. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. Wow. I gotta say, we got to put them on, uh, you know, what do we call this, a game of the week? The game, of the week. game yeah, of the week. We play every Saturday. Uh, we play every Saturday, eight and none. Um, got some pretty good athletes uh, led by my son. Good. I bet. <laughs> I was wondering, if you're coaching eight and under, it's got to be a son. Game of, of the week, not for the week. Yeah, but I am looking forward to getting back to Columbia um, and, and – uh, John Combs, Ridgeview, uh, getting a chance to see Zach Norris and uh, yes. Keenan High School, yes. uh, Jason Powell and Richland Northeast. Uh, I think we have about uh, four games next weekend. Yeah, yeah, a bunch, yeah, a so lot, a lot. Looking forward to it. Yeah, we'll be at Ridgeview Friday night, and we'll be at Richland Northeast Saturday. And you mentioned um, Keenan High School, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Spring Valley. Spring Valley, as yes. Well. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so that's a little bit of uh, Irmo. And then we've got a little bit of the Keenan game. Keenan beat AC Flora tonight. Um, if you give me one moment, I'll be able to pull that up. I do want to mention something as well. A friend of mine is uh, he's 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 following us on his iPhone. Mm -hmm. So you can if uh, if you want to, if you're going to be at the game anyway, and you got an iPhone, you can still watch the replays right here, mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of times when you're in uh, at a high school game, or most high school games, you don't get re you don't get replay, especially right. in basketball. So uh, there's an added bonus. Uh, to this uh, broadcast. Yeah, that's a good point. Even if you're at the game, you can watch the replay. Yeah, I didn't you, even think of that. You can still see what's going on as we bring you the replays, and you can listen to Kerry break it down and tell you whether you should be happy or sad uh, with the play of your point guard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, that's one thing um, I'm certainly going to harp on the most, uh, but that's two games in a row, man, that we've had uh, to go down 
uh, to the wire uh, yeah. last Friday, uh, Earl Moore and Lexington, and of course uh, tonight, uh, Dorman and Hillcrest. So uh, yeah. both of the games, and I guess uh, that's the reason we chose these games as the, as the games of the week because we expected such close games. We expected uh, this type of uh, competitive nature and uh, competitive fire, and uh, we haven't been disappointed. So um, if the rest of the games are going to go like the way the first two games have started, wow, Iraq is going to be really really excited i can't well, you, wait you could say we chose it that way or you could just say that um we said hey carrie we need the best games in south carolina <laughs> and he delivered so yeah. you didn't talk to these refs did you i did not okay. talk to the just refs. making sure yeah. <laughs> and just so you, our viewers know what we have up here is north augusta versus evans north augusta put a whooping on evans high school evans out of my hometown augusta um just beat aquinas in a uh, with a buzzer beater friday night aquinas probably what we thought was the best team in our area and so they're coming off a big win but North Augusta out of South Carolina absolutely put a beating on Evans tonight so um, you know back back towards my way uh, a little bit of action from, from, from that game a little border war here yes exactly and this is TJ Shepard he's a senior carry really good player you see the step back jump shot there nice. he scores in bunches he's really athletic really um, you know gets off the floor I think he's going to Maybe get a steal on a dunk here. Some interesting how, how footwear there. He's six one. Six he's one. Six one. Not very big, but he's very bouncy. He can shoot the basketball. Um, got you know a lot of game. He can really handle it. You know he's got the whole package. And See, Chad, we just wanted to thank you again for uh, for being responsible uh, for putting this together. Um, um, I, I, I I'm on a mission uh, to. Uh, help remind folks that uh, there's some good basketball in the state of South Carolina. And with your help and with the platform and the stage uh, that you've given us, um, I'm so appreciative. And, of course, having my partner alongside of me, uh, E-Rock, Eric Gamares, uh, my radio partner, um, I'm just happy that you've uh, made the effort to uh, give us this platform, give us this stage, and not only South Carolina, but also uh, the state of Georgia, the North yeah, Augusta, mm -hmm, Augusta mm -hmm, area. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Look forward to uh, just spreading the word, uh, spreading the word about uh, South Carolina basketball. Again, I came out of Columbia. You came out of South Carolina during an era uh, that produced uh, five to seven high-level basketball players every single year just in the city of Columbia for a 10-year period. Right. Uh, so I know it can be done, and hopefully with uh, the notoriety and the uh, recognition that we're now giving these high school kids, you know what? I think they become more motivated. I think they want to work a little bit harder to show that they are worthy of the recognition. And if you work harder and you put in the, uh, the time and if you obviously commit and sacrifice in terms of becoming a better player, then obviously your rewards are going to be greater when it comes to uh, potentially getting a scholarship offer. Yeah, yeah. Well, and I'll say, you know, wh while we let these highlights run, this is, uh, that's Marcus Stroman there. So this is Keenan and Flora. Actually, we'll go back to the beginning. Um, we'll go back to the beginning and let that play so we can see that first little jump shot. Here's Marcus Stroman whenever it cranks up here, coming off that screen from Charles Mann. A little step back jump shot. And we'll get to that in a second. I know that's something that, you know, he's been asked to work on that, you know, getting that shot off the dribble and, um, you know, bearing it from uh, off, you know, kind of what do you call it? Rhythm jump shot. Rhythm Remember jump shot. Remember you were telling me that? That rhythm Frank jump Martin, shot. Frank Martin, you know, yes. wants him to work on that rhythm jump shot. He has but, everything else. Uh, yeah. Uh, he plays tremendously hard defensively. Uh, he has great vision. Uh, he's really, really good off the bounce. Uh, nice size. Uh, nice understanding of how to play. Very unselfish. Uh, but to really become that point guard at the next level, uh, you're not going to be able to get those set shots like you get in high school. So uh, you have to uh, put in the work to uh, be able to get into your jump shot off the bounce, that rhythm jump shot that we talked about. Uh, because one thing uh, for sure at that level, at the SEC level, at the ACC level, uh, once that scout report uh, starts to surface, um, that's going to become the game plan of every opponent that you face. They're going to force you to become a jump shooter as opposed to a driver, especially when it's known that you are not a good jump shooter. Yeah, and you know, so what I want to say, just to wrap up, you know, the last thing I'll say is um, you guys are great. Um, this basketball and, and that, that you've been showcasing in the state of South Carolina is great. This game was great. And, um, you know, 
I, I kind of had the, the goal tonight of, you know, kind of bringing the highlights from across. And, and, and I kind of got my butt kicked tonight. So, you know, <laughs> I did my best. But, boy, you guys carried it. And I appreciate that. And, um, you know, proud to work with you guys. Heck of a night. Um, can't wait till Friday and Saturday. And, um, and, 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 you know, we haven't even mentioned, um, I don't know, Eric, if you've looked this far ahead, but the following Friday and Saturday you get, you get um, Oak Hill versus Keenan High School. Yes and Oak Hill versus Ridgeview High School. So try to keep me away. Try to keep me away, but I, I, uh, I, you, you, you name it, I'm along for the ride. This is going to be a lot of fun. And Oak Hill, are you kidding me? We get a look, we'll get our first look at uh, Sedarius Thornwell, uh, the guy that uh, could be uh, the, what's the right word here, the leak that kind of opens the dam uh, for uh, prospects to stick around. Uh, these guys that have been leaving for, for greener pastures, maybe sticking around and going to Clemson and Carolina. And Frank Martin uh, signing this guy has been a big, big deal. And, well, we get to bring it to folks and let them see this guy play. And, 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 that, and the opponent, Keenan High School, right. with Marcus, Marcus Stroman, who will be there the next year. So, right. you know, Gamecock fans, uh, basketball fans, who wouldn't want to see that? And, and those are just uh, one of the many games that are going to be played mm -hmm. uh, throughout that weekend. I that's think right. we have eight or ten games that weekend. Well, that's actually this weekend, but that next weekend, uh, three or four, but two okay. of them involve Oak Hill. I got you. And, you know, it's just it's going to be a blast. Good. Yeah. Okay, so, um, you know, I'll let the pros uh, sign us off, and thanks again for being with well, us, We'll guys. wrap it up here, then. Another uh, outstanding game here in the South Carolina High School basketball game of the week. We want to thank ABR Live for bringing this to you. Uh, tell your friends to go to netcastsports.com to watch that. Uh, they'll archive it. You can go back and watch it again. If you missed the Irmo-Lexington game, that'll be up as well. Uh, just text us. We'll send you links on that, and you can text us, uh, the Captain 560. I'm Eric G560, and you got Aug B-Ball. You see those uh, tweets, or I'm sorry, those Twitter handles at the bottom of your screen. Captain, great job, and I know you don't like the word great, to be tossed about, but you did a fantastic job uh, keeping our listeners informed of what was going on on the basketball court. We look forward to being back with you Friday, uh, and uh, boy, we've got a lot, a lot of games. What two games Friday, two games Saturday? You heard O'Kill, so a lot to look forward to. Thanks to all of you for hanging out with us, Captain. We'll see you uh, uh, in the morning. In the morning, yeah, back. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get enough of me. We'll be back uh, in studio 560. The team, if you want to catch us, that. Uh, you can do that a lot of different ways. And i tell you what, follow us on Twitter, and we'll keep you informed on that as well. We do this for a living. Uh, so uh, we appreciate you, Chad. We appreciate uh, ABR Live, and we'll see you Friday. Let's wrap it up. Take care.